and be like, okay, but yeah, but what about what about aliens hijacking the ships? And honestly, what I'm really concerned about is the alien boobies. All right, are we gonna get some sweet alien poon? That's that's really what I want to know about here, Elon. Can you tell me about that? Because if so, I'm on board. You know, come on. Uh, all right, let's call a nice galaxy first. That sounds horrifying enough. There's regular travel back and forth to Mars. Roughly. Like a real civilization on Mars. Well, I think it's going to take a while to build a real civilization. The, I, the the real th- the real the threshold that really matters is for getting past the great filter uh, is do we have enough resources on Mars such that if the uh, if the spaceships from Earth stop coming you can for, survive yeah so you, like you'd only be just missing one little thing you'd be like you're on a long sea voyage and the only thing you're missing is vitamin C <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> It's only a matter of time, you know. Yeah. And then it's gonna be curtains. So you got to have uh, all the things necessary to sustain civilization on Mars. Um, and the reason that the shifts from Earth stop coming could be World War Three, or it could be due to a slow decline of civilization. So civilization here on Earth could end with a bang or a whimper. Um, or natural disasters. Yeah. Asteroid impact. Yeah, that would be in the bang category. Yeah. <laughs> but it, could, it also could be like a whole series of things. Like, so like what killed the dinosaurs? Well, right. it wasn't just one thing, you know. Right. It was like a whole bunch of things happened in a row. And It's just like, it's just weird watching something like this, knowing that like you happen to be the richest man on the planet at the same time. Just, I, I don't know. It, it would feel weird to me being like civilization could end. Yes. There's so many problems in the world. I mean, there's certainly a, a strong possibility that millions and millions of people will be homeless and starve and climate change. Pretty horrifying. It's just, it's just really hard if, if only some people had the ability to do anything about it, but alas, alas, onto the spaceships. Let's going to speed this up slightly. You know, um, well, they, they, they could have taken any one of those things. They had like three things happen. And no dinosaurs. Which is kind of amazing that crocodiles are still here. Yeah. Those fuckers. Well, cro- they're resilient. Cro- crocodiles, they, um, they'll, they'll live on decayed meat. They'll, they love rotten meat. And so in a, any kind of disastrous situation, there's a lot of dead creatures. And the crocodiles love it. So um, that's why they're around. Crocodiles and bugs and mushrooms. Um, and, and shrews. Shrews, yeah. Which is why we're here. Yeah, exactly. Our great 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 grandparents were shrews. <laughs> what a strange thing. <laughs> so like, yeah, to come from. So there's hope. There's hope for all you. <laughs> I feel like Rogan's like a little giddy schoolboy in this right now. He's like, and shrews. <laughs> I don't know if it's the weed or he's just like that perfect that perfect blend, just the right amounts of weed and whiskey. But it, but he's just just wants to have a little whimsical time with Elon, his big hero, his space he's hero. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> One day uh, you can go to Mars. Just keep doing your homework. Absolutely. So, so there'll be the, the, you say the great filter. What did you mean by that? Um, well, so there's something called like the Fermi paradox of like where mm-hmm. are the aliens? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, where are the aliens? Um, and um, I think it was Carl Sagan that said like, uh, if, if there either are a lot of aliens or none, and the either they're equally terrifying. Mm. Um. If there are a lot of aliens, well, I mean, the invasion ship slash, uh, uh, you know, bug infestation, just, you know, like... <laughs> the, the, Starship like, Trooper style? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like... <laughs> you know what's odd is, like, the people who worship this man is a god. Like, you know, a god, or at least a vicar of God on Earth. This Is this going to be, like, the most profound thing that's ever been said? It's like, uh, the Fermi paradox. Yes, that's true. There's either... Just either a lot of aliens or there's none. Apparently, Carl Sagan said that as well. Yeah, wow. Oof, oof. This is this is wild. This is wild. An alien civilization might just view us as like a bug infestation. Right. You know, it's like hey, we left that planet it was fine. Now it's got a bunch of bugs. Just go fumigate it. You know, um, like we fumigate a house. 
Um, yeah, that, that's certainly possible. The Lost vs. No Aliens quote is by Isaac Asimov. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for filling that in. And for those of you unfamiliar with the Fermi Paradox, I highly recommend the channel, and they don't need my support, but uh, in a nutshell, they've got a really, really good series of videos on the Fermi Paradox. The idea being, why haven't we had any contact from aliens? And there's a couple of schools of thought on that. One, that's, space is incredibly vast. It's, it's so incredibly vast, we can't really wrap our heads around it, but when we're talking about traveling millions upon millions of light years, uh, it, just to get between uh, simple things like galaxies, well, then <laughs> the idea of being able to do interspace travel uh, would require us to bend the current laws of physics as we know it. But then there's other ideas. Why haven't we received anything that might have a signal about aliens? Are we the only ones on Earth? Also, if we were to multiply the amount of planets, galaxies that there are in the known universe with the probability that there could be life on a certain planet based on its distance from a heat source uh, and a whole bunch of other factors that cause things like water, uh, you know, H2O and other stuff to appear. If we did the math, how probable is it that we have life on other planets? It's also something that's kind of kind of fascinating kind of it's those big those big heady moments you have you know when you've when you've done some dmt well actually no probably not on dmt i've never tried dmt but it looks like it's absolutely horrifying well maybe maybe you've had a a good little good little joint sitting on the top of a car some mushrooms some acid just just calm you know just calm relaxing evening you start you start percolating these kind of ideas and then uh but if there are no aliens well could it be that all civilizations are just destroyed before they become inter inter uh Stellar, you know, mm. so, uh, and, and I want to be clear, like, <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, I, there is no evidence for alien life on Earth. That alien, I, there's no, a, there's no evidence for alien life. There's no direct evidence for alien life. No, you know, and if somebody says, oh, what about this alien for, uh, you know, uh, sighting or whatever, I'm like, listen, it's got to be at least as good as a 7-Eleven or ATM cam, okay? <laughs> it's like, if somebody's got to have at least like an iPhone 1 level camera, yeah. like something, you know? The problem with that is it's just too easy to fake things today, too. Yeah, sure. I look, I, they should at least try hard in, their, in faking it. Are you familiar with uh, Commander David Fravor's uh, account of uh, the Tic Tac UFO that he encountered off of the uh, coast of San Diego? Le you know Lex, Lex Friedman? Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got the queued up already, Comrade. His podcast, and I interviewed him as well. And if you ever get a chance to listen to Lex's uh, conversation with him, it's really excellent. But this guy is a naval fighter pilot, and he talked about this thing that they tracked on radar that went from more than 60,000 feet above sea level to one foot in less than a second, shaped like a Tic Tac, no visible sign of propulsion, uh, blocked radar, uh, actively jammed their tracking systems and then went to their predetermined point that they were supposed to, uh, that the uh, the fighter jet was supposed to scramble to, went to it uh, 30 miles away in, you know, a couple seconds. Like, they have no idea how it did it. They, they don't know what it is. Okay. And these guys that were uh, wor working for the Navy off the coast said they had encountered them several times. They didn't know what they were. They didn't know what to do. Well, do they have they a just did photo nothing. or something? I mean, they do. They have video of it. Uh, okay. Know. They have video of it. They have, um, there's, you, you ever see the New York Times article that came out in 2017 about this stuff? I uh, don't know. Yeah, there was a New York Times article in 2017. <laughs> Elon, that was seems like he's really not interested in the conspiracy other, theory. There's a, a couple other different <laughs> sightings that were very similar. They sure. were trying to figure out what these things were and why. And it was also in the COVID relief package that, they, that the CIA was supposed to release. Yeah, the, the politicians are <laughs> trying to figure out what all this shit is. And so, so they tried to get them to release all the information they have within 180 days. It's Honestly, I think I would know okay, if there were aliens. I would uh, hope so. That's yeah. what I'm asking you. No, I, 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 I'd be jumping on that. Like, like. You should watch that conversation with Lex. It's, sure. Like, here's the thing. Do you think that they would want us to know? Or do you think they would just be observing and making sure we don't blow ourselves up? Would, would, I don't if know, you man. They're real civilization? They sure are subtle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they yeah. wanted us to know, obviously they, they could just, For sure. you know, show up and walk yeah. down Main Street, you know? Right. Like, hey, I'm an alien. Check me out, you know? Right. Uh, he has my spaceship. I just land in the middle of Times Square. We're like, right. just okay. Or hover over downtown LA. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, okay, we believe you. Yeah. Um, so, whatever they are, they are very subtle, very subtle, these aliens. How I, often do you think about it? Nine, zero. Zero? <laughs> Even though you're thinking about interplanetary travel, you don't really think about aliens. No, I mean, if they show up, I'm like, why, why do you think that is, Joe? <laughs> I think he's he's already given you like one decent enough thing you should probably research the Fermi paradox as to why he's not too concerned about the aliens. I mean, something that we should concern ourselves uh, a little bit more uh, than the aliens when it comes to traveling to Mars is, is just sustaining human life, uh, especially when it comes to the high degree of radiation that you would be experiencing on a regular basis. That's that's probably what I would be worried about a little bit more is the radiation. It'd be like, okay, but yeah, but what about what about aliens hijacking the ships? And honestly, what I'm really concerned about is the alien boobies. All right, are we gonna get some sweet alien poon? That's that's, that's really what I want to know about here, Elon. Can you tell me about that? Because if so, I'm on board, you know? Come on. Great. Okay, now this isn't your information. But we... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What 
an interesting way of putting it. This is new information. This is new information. Like, where are you yeah. guys up till now? Yeah. Um, so, anyway, uh, listen, I'm, if, if, if I see some evidence for aliens, I'll, I'll be like, I'll be the first to be like, ah, aliens, you know? Right. Then um, you'll investigate. But until then, you think it's kind of a waste of time? Yeah. Yeah. It definitely seems like a waste of time if nothing's happened so far. You think about all the people that have been researching aliens for their whole life, and they have yeah. very little to show for it. Well, y you know, there's... Other than cool stories. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have archaeologists going all over the world looking at things. You know, there's this uh, people... Like, if, if we were to find something like, let's say, like a cube of titanium, just like a one-inch cube of titanium, let's say, in the middle of the pyramid, I'd be like... Yeah, Joe's not letting sure. this one there's go. There's no way they could have made a titanium back then. Mm. No, there's no way. They, that's hard. That's all. One little... Didn't even need a computer. Like, a computer would be like, hey, wow, computers, they didn't have computers back then, so it must be aliens. But, but even just, like, some advanced metallurgy. Anything. Like, I mean, it's anything like that. Right. No, so, nothing like that uh, that we could point to that we can't do. Everything that we found archaeologically is consistent with the time, uh, the technology they had at that time. Archaeologically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't just talk about old stuff. Yeah. yeah, just the right It's not like, yeah. like, like if aliens visited, there'd be something buried somewhere, I think. Um, we haven't seen anything. So anyway, I mean, maybe there are aliens, but they're very subtle. If there are, they're just very, uh, they're being pretty shy. Um, <laughs> so... As um, far as we can tell, there's none. So, nor are we seeing signals from any other solar system or anything like that. So, um, now, and the thing is that um, on a galactic time scale, even with sublight travel, you could absolutely colonize the whole galaxy, even some of the neighboring galaxies. Um, so, if you gave, if you said a million years with, with, with and say we, there's, no, there's no new physics, could you colonize the galaxy in a million years? Absolutely, the entire galaxy. So you would start with Mars, build bases on Mars, then yeah. use Mars to jump off to all these other planets, no, no. set up places there, and yeah. over no, thousands no. of years, easily. Yeah, just, just, just yeah. kind of like, you know, so hop from one solar system to the next, and yeah. That, it seems like that's... I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't genuinely know enough about the science to refute that, but anytime I hear about, like, another planet's conditions, they sound completely inhospitable to life. Like, some of them have weird things, like diamond tornadoes and, like, s temperatures of which, like, molten mercury, like, things like, like, stuff that I, I don't understand what you would assume to be doing there. And plus, like, once you leave the Goldilocks zone, it gets really, really, really cold in some parts of the galaxy. I mean, that's why there is no life on, on those planets. They're, they're hurtling rocks filled with, like, monstrous degrees of conditions. I, I don't know. It's totally sound and how we would do it. It's just that habitable planets are so scarce it isn't worth building up to that for a thousand years. Well, my, I, like, isn't that why we're constantly saying that we found another planet with similar conditions to Earth here, and then you're like, okay, and then it's like, and this is only 27 million light years away, and then you're like, oh, okay, well, that's not, it's not happening anytime soon, but at the same time, interesting, I would, I would assume you'd want to get there rather than colonize planets that just seem completely completely foreboding to, to life living on them. You know what's wild is we have so many problems on Earth. Like, trust me, I, I love science fiction and, you know, like most people, I, I want us to reach the stars. I want us to have luxury queer space communism. I want us to do all that fun stuff. I think it sounds amazing. I want us to, like, further the human experience and, and learn all there is, too. Like, infinite knowledge, infinite technology, infinite happiness, infinite orgasms. All that sounds incredible. But for the time being, we've got a lot of fucked up shit on, on the only planet we have and then if the next nearest one is what 27 light years away then i don't know maybe maybe let's let's concentrate on on fixing things here a little bit before sending the super rich to mars or like uh, starting the super rich space station program so people can travel to the moon for fun or things like that it's yeah it is to keep the spectacle going and earth's been a snowball and super hot it, it, the if, if you read like the geological history of earth it's like very long and complicated um so and then there have been so many extinction events, not like just a few. Um, yeah. I mean, the. Okay, so sorry, Al Alpha Centauri is only 4.2 light years away. So that's, that's not as bad. That's not 27. So this would only take, uh, what is it, uh, something, something less, maybe? The Permian extinction event, that was a real rough one, where it's like well over 90% of all species uh, died out. Um, and that doesn't tell the whole story because. Yeah, but we don't have solar sails yet. Use. Fungi and, um, you know, like sponges and stuff like that, you know. Uh, like, if, if, are you are you a sponge? <laughs> okay, you're probably doing okay. <laughs> They're still around. Sponge, sponge. Does this look like what a sponge would do? 
All right, I just want to hear about when he broke the Cybertruck. Have you ever considered something alternative to uh, air inflated tires? Have you seen some yeah. of these these alternatives that have uh, essentially spaces in between the yeah. upper wall and the wheel? Have you thought about that? Yeah, we've, we've had uh, we haven't found a you know uh, a tire that because uh, you got to wor worry about road noise. Uh, you got to take out uh, potholes and bumps. Um, you you, you got to have like um, good grip. But you also want to have low rolling resistance so that you know you get good range. Those are a lot of things to try to put into one tire. Um, then if you also say and it can't have air, it's like this is hard. Um, so but you're talking. I'm talking to a guy who's putting people on Mars. You can't figure out an yeah. airless tire. It's just it's it's an incremental constraint. Mm. Um, so I'm not saying there won't be such a thing. I think there will be. To be precise, because it seems like we've just gotten way too comfortable with this idea that tires blow out and you get flats. It's very annoying. Flats are annoying. Yeah, very yeah. annoying. Yeah. Um, in non-sport tires, by the way, are much less likely to go to have flats because sure they have more know, bounce. They yeah. Go, yeah, like you, let's say yeah. you, hit, you hit the edge of a pothole. Mm -hmm. you, if you got more rubber wall, you know you got a longer way to go before yeah. you, you pinch the tire. So, um, sport tires tend to have more flats, um, in, in, especially in, in LA potholes. That's worse. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like there's, there's one particular pothole on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> it would just take out so many Model S, like a boom, boom, both sides of the car. <laughs> really? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> um, yeah, Steven Spielberg was actually once. It's like, hey, St St Steven Spielberg is like <laughs> two tires. But I was like, God damn it, I know that pothole. Yeah. I mean, we must have thrown at least at least a dozen people must have thrown steel bolts. At, at the, the same window, though? Yeah, same damn window. Isn't that the problem? Yeah, that might, it turns out that might be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep throwing steel bowls, eventually it's going to break. <laughs> and and I, did, I did ask Franz to really wind up and give it all, Ooh. you know. And I should, I should, should have like, oh, take it easy, yeah. you know. Give me a you don't need to, wind up. Yeah, we don't need the fast bowl. Yeah, so, but I, asked for, I did ask for the fast bowl, and we're like, okay, let's go for the slightly not slightly slower bowl. Do you think it was because you guys were hitting the sidewall with a sledgehammer yeah, yeah, first? Yeah, that, that could be, like, we're trying to figure out how the hell does this thing break, because, I mean, we were just bouncing steel bowls off it all day. Right. Um, and we think possibly what, it, what, what might have happened there was that uh, hitting it with a sledgehammer might have cracked the base of it. And mm -hmm. once you crack the base of it, it loses all its strength. Right. Um, and, then, and then it would just have a hairline fracture. And then, then you, you, hit, you hit it anywhere, it's going to shatter. Did you recreate that? How is this so boring? Like, the, I'll be honest, I, I, I despise Elon Musk. The last conversation they had at least had some interesting topics. He was talking about AI. He went, like, really far into deep think technology. He didn't, didn't bring up the fact of, uh, you know, it's, it's a little unusual that the majority of programmers on AI right now happen to be white, and that's actually causing a bit of a problem. But anyways, he, he, was, he was getting into topics that I had a little bit more interest in, and this one's like, what about tires, bro? Have you, have you ever heard of self-inflating tires? What about solid tires? Yeah, tell me about traction, bro. Sounds pretty, sounds pretty good. Good traction, bro. Good traction. What lies around the corner? Never knowing who's going to kill you. Are you the next one to be murked? You never know if it's a friend or a foe. If you want to see the biggest names in bread tube and left twitch and butter thing and I don't know the fucking names anymore, come see left. Among us. If you want us to advertise your channel or work, please go to wearesurfs.com and email us a 20 to 30 second ad and we'll take it on to the end of one of our videos to help promote your leftist channel or progressive something. Whatever you do. To our God, I'm Rast, Xander Corvus, and Schlatsky. We shall commit blood sacrifices in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, our lives are yours to command. To our lords, Jeffrey Lamb, Trevor R., Stephen, Hans Josephin, Poppy Nelson, Ryan Lubin, Jimothy K. Meeblebeeps Jr., we bow meekly for your pleasure. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Byth, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Political Puppy, Jimmy Big Nuts, Andreas Chitoro, Good Poon Hates Cops, That's Solid Poon Then, Dr. Zayas, Yopi, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Jack Darko, Thomas Barrington, Jay Fraser Cartwright, Goofalankius, Melissa Murphy, Nicholas Marks, Alexander Thaler, Ali Rada Jaffer, Alex Gauvin, Radical Maniac, we salute you.